All right, question of the day today. Who or what is motivating George Soros? People don't like to talk about him. They're very fearful to talk about him because if you say anything that he doesn't like, his goonies will come out and accuse you of being anti-Semitic. Yeah, you can't, you can't say anything about George Soros. I'm going to say a lot about him today. Plus, later on, I'm going to be weighing into the Angel Reese saga. That's the LSU basketball player who set Twitter and the sports community on fire for doing a hand gesture after she won. She says that she's not going to be accepting Jill Biden's apology. I'm going to talk more about that. And later on, we're going to discuss convicted murderer Alex Murdoch because it's weird that he's receiving love letters in jail. Why does this keep happening? Why do murderers keep receiving love in jail? All that and more today coming up on Candace Owens. People are angry, understandably angry. What is going on right now? The indictment of Donald Trump. Everything that we saw yesterday is undoubtedly infuriating. But I'm going to be honest with you. I feel so depressed about it. I woke up and I felt so despaired. I First thing I did was I looked at the news, I looked at all the coverage, looked at what everybody was saying, all of the analyses, and I just thought, I want to turn my phone off and I want to go away, right? I think that that is how a lot of Americans feel. You can feel angry, you can feel frustrated, but there is also this overwhelming sadness with this understanding that we are, in fact, losing our country. There's no way to sugarcoat it, right? I, I feel that we have to be honest and actually take a look at where we are and assess what is going to happen in the future, right? The gloves are completely off. This has never happened. This is now America has just become a banana republic. And there are a lot of takes on what happened, and you know the details. You, Every single person is talking about this, obviously. First and foremost, one of the biggest things, the glaring obvious omission here, is that within the indictment, the federal law that Trump allegedly violated is just not listed, <laughs> They don't care. They're like, I don't even tell you what you did wrong. It doesn't really, I don't, well, we need to just first indict you to figure out what it is that you did wrong, what, what federal law was violated. And also, if it was a federal law that was violated, why is Alvin Bragg, who is a state district attorney, bringing about the charges? None of it makes any sense because none of it has to in a banana republic. I can't confirm this. Eric Trump stated that they spent $200 million on security last night in New York City. Uh, what we can confirm is that they had to deploy 38,000 officers for this indictment and this arraignment. And so they're just willing to spend this much money while criminals run amok in New York City, while people are being killed every single day, while they are releasing people that are committing real crimes, real violent crimes. Alvin Bragg is ignoring those individuals because he basically understands that he has one job, and his job is to get Trump. That is why he was elected. That was his promise when he was a candidate. Elect me and I will get Trump. And who did he take money from? Of course, George Soros. We always hear George Soros' name. And a few people are really willing to do a deep dive on him because they fear being called anti-Semitic because he hides behind his Jewish identity. And it's interesting that he hides behind his Jewish identity because he is not himself explicitly supportive of Jews. If you look at the way that he spends his money. In fact, he is explicitly anti-Israel, which is curious. It's very curious. To be clear, Soros-backed groups have spent $40 million to elect 75 progressive prosecutors over the last decade. Okay, that means that one in five Americans now live in areas that are covered by his criminal justice reformers. And I'm putting criminal justice reformers in um, air quotations because they are not really reforming anything. Obviously, what they are doing is they are releasing criminals onto the street. Why does George Soros want to fund the destruction of America? Does that make sense? Does it make sense for somebody who has found so much success in their life to dedicate his life? Literally, he's how old is he? He's, he's so old, right? He should just be living on an island enjoying all of his wealth. Instead, he is committed to fostering the end of America. That is the truth. And so we need to ask questions. Who is George Soros? Well, officially, don't forget he controls an entire network of fact checkers. But he wants you to know that he is just a Jewish boy he was a Jewish boy, pardon, who grew up in Nazi-occupied Hungary. 
And to survive the war, he had to live for a time with a Hungarian officer who was tasked with inventorying the possessions in homes where Jews had been forced to leave. So he doesn't deny this fact, that, but he, this was for, to survive. To survive, he was with a Hungarian officer who would go into the homes of Jewish people who were forced to flee and inventory their items for Nazis. Here is a clip of George Soros discussing that experience, which you would think was deeply troubling to him as a young Jewish boy. But take a listen. My understanding is, is that you went out with this protector of yours who swore that you were uh, his adopted godson. Yes, yes, yes. Went out, in fact, and helped in the confiscation of property from the Jews. That's right. Yes. I mean, that's, that sounds uh, like an experience that would send lots of people to the psychiatric couch for many, many years. Was it difficult? Uh, not, not, not at all. Not at all. It, uh, maybe as a child, you don't, you don't see the connection. Uh, but it was, it created no, no problem at all. No feeling of guilt. No. He's smiling. <laughs> Look at that clip. He's smiling and acknowledging that he felt no guilt. He's saying, "Well, you know, I was a child, so this didn't really mean anything to me." It means he didn't really associate himself as a Jew. Just was like, this is just kind of what I'm doing. I'm a child and I'm here and I'm assisting this officer in inventorying Jewish people's belongings. Okay, so that's really strange. Here's another clip of Soros talking about how he is building an empire to replace the Soviet empire. Take a listen. When the Soviet Union, uh, the Soviet empire collapsed, and as the empire uh, uh, collapsed, uh, uh, I moved in and picked up the pieces. Uh, first in Hungary in 1984, uh, and, and then Poland in, in 87, China in 87 as well. Uh, and uh, so, so this is how the, this, uh, what I'm, the Soros Empire uh, <laughs> replacing the Soviet Empire. <laughs> He sounds almost giddy talking about that. I'm just you know, building the Soros Empire to replace the Soviet Empire. The Soviet Empire, what a strange thing. He is very obviously allegiant to the Eastern Hemisphere, and he has a lot of detest for the Western Hemisphere. He is funding its collapse. He has been allowed to fund its collapse. He is buying and paying for politicians to do his bidding. So what are his version of events? How does a young Jewish boy who wants you to believe, according to his fact checkers, he was very scared, even though in his own words he was not, he does not feel any guilt about what he did. How does somebody come out of that experience, come out and call yourself a survivor of the Nazi occupation? And how do you come out of that hating America? It's a question. How do you come out of it saying, okay, right, these are your liberators, your great liberators, the Americans, the Western Hemisphere, he should be in love with us. Instead, he wants to see our destruction. He has become successful at that. Make no mistakes. You have to tether yourself to reality. In fact, last night, and nobody is talking about this because most people are rightfully possessed with Trump's indictment, but last night in Wisconsin, another Soros-funded judge was elected to the Supreme Court. He's having tremendous success all across the United States. The outlook is bleak. We need to win Wisconsin in order for us to win the 2024 election. So while everyone is focused in New York, they are still dedicated to all of these elections that are taking place across the United States. The Democrats have built a machine and the Republicans have not. The RNC has failed us. That is the truth. They are not paying attention to these races. They are not spending the money where they need to be spending the money. Trump last night, I think, did a really good job summarizing where we are at in this country. And again, the outlook is bleak, but it is honest, and we should hear him in his own words. He gave this speech at Mar-a-Lago following his arraignment. Take a listen. Our economy is crashing. Inflation is out of control. Russia has joined with China. Can you believe that? Saudi Arabia has joined with Iran. China, Russia. Iran and North Korea have formed together as a menacing and destructive coalition would have never happened 
if I were your president, would never have happened. Nor would Russia attacking Ukraine have happened. All of those lives would be saved. All of those beautiful cities would be standing. Our currency is crashing and will soon no longer be the world standard, which will be our greatest defeat, frankly, in 200 years. There will be no defeat like that. That will take us away from being even a great power. He is so correct there. The United States dollar, these are things that are happening right now, is going to no longer be the global standard. It's exactly true. That is the intended result, I believe, in pushing Russia into the arms of China. All of these things, you ask questions, why are we doing this? Why are we forcing Russia to want to develop an alliance with China to survive? They're in an existential crisis. <laughs> why is the entire Western Hemisphere said, we're not gonna do business with you. So what is naturally happening is people are creating a new world economy, a new global economy and we are no longer going to be at the center of it. It sounds almost exactly like George Soros's ambitions. The collapse of power in the Western Hemisphere transferred to power in the Eastern Hemisphere. So that's where we are at right now, you guys. No good news, but here is what I'm going to do. I am very interested in George Soros now. Suddenly I'm interested. I am going to buy a book in which somebody has apparently uh, documented his entire life, and I'm going to try to get that individual to come onto this podcast to speak to us extensively about what it is that is motivating him and what his ambitions are, and also his son, because his son has taken over for him, obviously. George Soros is well on in his years, and his son is now taking over and funding all of these projects, funding the collapse of America. Uh, so stay tuned. This is just the beginning. Be sure to send me any clips, any past articles or any past videos that you have of George Soros because I do not feel threatened by him. I think he is absolute scum and he should be banned from the United States of America just like he's banned from his home country of Hungary. And that's all I have to say about that. If you're looking for an affordable, reliable mobile phone service that doesn't compromise on quality or price, look no further than Pure Talk. The average family saves over $900 a year when they switch to Pure Talk from Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. Let's think about that. If the average family has three to four people and is saving over $900 per year, how much would a family of eight save? This is money that will go to you and your family instead of lining the pockets of massive wireless corporations. Pure Talk is so sure that you're going to love your service, they're backing it up with a 100% money back guarantee. Stop paying a fortune for your wireless service corporations. Get unlimited talk, text, and plenty of data for just $30 a month with Pure Talk. Their US-based customer service team makes the switch really easy. You can switch over to Pure Talk in as little as 10 minutes while keeping your phone and your phone number. Your first month is guaranteed risk-free. Start enjoying an affordable, reliable mobile service that won't let you down. Go to puretalk.com and enter promo code OWEN to save 50% off your first month. That's puretalk.com, promo code OWENS. Pure Talk is simply smarter wireless. Okay, now it's time for some topics du jour. Let's start with some good news. Matt Walsh visiting New Mexico State University. He gave a speech, then he took some questions, a lot of questions from some trannies. He's doing some really good work with trannies right now um, by making them realize that they are, in fact, either a man or a woman. And I was really impressed with this clip because when you force them to talk through why they're convinced that they are a male or a female, you really get to the center of how much bull this entire ideology is. So here is a very nice, respectable uh, man stepping to the plate to explain to Matt how he knows that he is, in fact, a woman. And I've cut this clip a bit. In the beginning, he just t talks about you know, how great a person he is, how he has a job, how he has a, a meaningful degree. He does actually, in fact, have a meaningful degree. It's not a fluffy one. Um, and then he kind of gets to the crux, which I'm going to show you, of how he really knows that he's a woman, even though just can look at him and see that that just is not true. Take a listen. You've asserted that no one would ever see me as a woman, that nobody would ever see or could see a transgender person as a woman, and yet I have dozens of friends from diverse backgrounds, women from the reservation, a woman from Japan, uh, several immigrant women, I have my coworkers, I have my boss, my VP, my CEO, all respecting me as a woman, uh, my family, my long-term friends who are actually here with me. Uh, 
all of these people assure me, like, I'm a woman. They'll tell me, girl, like, there is no way you are a man. They why see you, me as a woman. Why? So the question, okay. how can you assert that nobody would ever see me as a woman when my material experience tells me you're wrong? Okay. It's interesting that that's the part of my talk you chose to ask a question about because that's not in my talk at all. Um, I don't believe I said that no one would ever see you as a woman. I mean, it's possible, I suppose, that you could fool someone. Now, you brought this up, so I have to tell you that I, you brought this up. You've, you've put your identity on the table for conversation. And so I'm going to say you, you wouldn't fool me at all. I mean, I see a man 100%. Um, and I think that most people would. Now, the, the, fact, the fact that you have people in your life who are saying to you, oh, you're totally a woman, it's exactly what I'm talking about. No one in my life has ever once said to me, you're totally a man, Matt. You know, if, my, if, 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 if a friend of mine called me on the phone and said, listen, Matt, I want you to know you're really a man, I would think that there was something wrong with him. I would say, why are you saying that at all? It doesn't make any sense. So the fact that this is a conversation to begin with tells me, it only, it only proves the point that I'm trying to make, that, the, that your identity, even in your own mind, is up for, it's something that you need to be assured of. So first I want to point to the funny part of that clip, which is that one of the reasons that this man is convinced that he is a woman is he feels it's necessary to say that many different kinds of women, a black woman and a disabled person, he's like diversity, equity, and inclusion as he's asking this question. I have a Native American friend and I have an immigrant friend and they all say I'm a woman. And since there's so many different kinds of women saying this, it therefore must be true. So the little DEI initiative in the question makes me laugh. But I mean, what Matt says here is so crucial and it made me giggle just thinking about this because it's just so implausible that the person asking the question, the young man asking the question says, these women look at me and they say, girl, there is no way you are a woman. I cannot say to you how bizarre that would be if a woman said that to me. Like, there's just, it's just not the way women speak to one another. There is no woman that would say, girl. There, you are just absolutely a woman, Candace. Girl, there is just, you are definitely a woman. There's just no way that you were anything but a woman. I would instantly start to call into question my entire identity. I'd be like, why are you saying this? Like, obviously I'm a woman. Like, you don't have to say this unless it's so obviously not true that you're saying it to simply brainwash me and to further send me into some sort of a delusion, right? That's, that's just when you need to lie so much to convince somebody that they are something that they are so clearly not. So it's, it's such a sensible way of looking at this entire predicament. If you need to be told over and over again, if you need to be assured that you are a woman, then it's likely because you are not. We, women are not having that experience that you are having there. So another tranny steps to the plate and he starts asking Matt all sorts of questions about gender and identity. And he offers that he is himself an EMT, which should scare us all, that the medical profession is now being run amok with people that believe that there is a spectrum of gender. But then Matt asks this EMT a question back. Take a listen. I have one last question. Ready, Mr. Walsh, can I ask a question? I just have one, I have one quick, can, we, can, we, can you come back for one second? Because this is an important question. You said you're an EMT. Okay, if you're responding, you're responding to a health emergency, biological male, somebody with a penis is, uh, is having a medical emergency, and they say to you, um, I think I'm having a miscarriage. Would you, would you check them to see if they're having a miscarriage? Would you consider that a possibility for them? Look. <laughs> No, but that's because some people don't have body parts. Doesn't mean they're not a woman. Okay. Sounds like we've established there are some people who, in principle, can get pregnant, and there are some people who can't. So there's two categories, otherwise known as binary. Lots of women can't get pregnant either. Yeah, but they're still of the nature to get pregnant. The only but reason, they can't get pregnant. Yes, but Truth they, matters, right? It, it does. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. Truth matters, and they can't okay. get pregnant. I, that's the truth. So how are they still women? Because they are... For, for, this, for the same reason, for the, for the same reason 
that I, that I can rightly say that human beings have two legs. And if a person is born with only one leg, that doesn't call into question the statement that human beings have two legs, okay? A person being born with one leg doesn't mean that now legs are on a spectrum and we can't say, <laughs> we can't say anything at all about how many legs a person has. Who knows, they could, have, they could be a centipede. You know, they could have a hundred legs. No, we know human beings have two legs. If a human is born without two legs, something went wrong. They were supposed to have that second leg. Something went wrong. If you, if you, if you meet a person on the street who only has one leg, maybe, maybe they had an accident. Maybe they were in war. Maybe, maybe, some, you know, maybe they were in a car accident. Maybe they had cancer. A leg was cut off. But you know that something went wrong because of the, by their nature, they're supposed to have two legs. Same thing for a woman. A woman, by her nature, can get pregnant. A man, by his nature, never can. So if you meet a woman of childbearing age, say she's 28 years old, and she can't get pregnant, you know automatically that something has gone wrong. And she can go to the doctor and find out what that thing is, even if they can't fix it. So that proves that women, by their nature, can get pregnant. Because the simple fact that she can't shows you that there is something Wrong. This is what is known as the exception that proves the rule. Whereas if a male with a penis can't get pregnant, no doctor on earth is going to run tests to see what's wrong with him. <laughs> because they already know it's that he's a male and there's only male and female, those who can get pregnant and those who can't. Such a salient point, and you hear that argument all the time. Well, what if a woman can't get pregnant? Then does that mean that she's no longer a woman? No, of course not. And, and using that exact same predicament for the EMT, if a woman who could not get pregnant called 911 and said, I'm having a miscarriage, and the EMTs arrived, they would believe her. <laughs> they would believe her that she was having a miscarriage. They wouldn't immediately go, we're not going to treat this. Because nothing would betray to them, nothing would, would signal to them that this was not a woman and that it was not plausible that she was having a miscarriage. Whereas if a man called with a penis and said, I'm having a miscarriage, they would be wondering whether or not they needed to put this person on a Psych 5150 hold. They would be wondering whether or not this person was having a mental crisis. They would actually be certain, they would be sure that they needed backup, that they needed to have this person evaluated psychiatrically. So that's the difference and something that an EMT would know, that you would believe the woman even if she was lying and she couldn't have a child, but you would not believe the man. You would know that he was a crazy person. And all these people that are stepping up to Matt are, in fact, crazy people who need psychiatric evaluation. I want these people to get help. I really do believe that Matt is doing the Lord's work. He is, he is defeating gender ideology one tranny at a time. All right, guys, I want to get into, a lot of you guys wrote me some comments actually in yesterday's episode regarding Angel Reese. We're like, I can't believe we're not talking about Angel Reese. I don't tend to talk about sports. I did follow this predicament and I thought it was ridiculous. And for those of you that do not watch sports like me, I'm obviously much more, I'm paying much more attention to everything that's happening in politics. This was an interesting one. So LSU uh, has a player named Angel Reese, and she is excellent. She's very good. And the LSU play, LSU was playing against Iowa for the championship, and they were winning, and she did a gesture at the end of the game. She essentially put her hand up to her face, and I'm going to show you this. She pointed to her finger, and it's essentially something that John Cena does, and it basically means that you can't see me, and she kind of pointed to her finger signaling the fact that she was about to get a ring. Take a listen and a watch. And Angel Reese knows a ring is coming. So you can see she's taunting that player that she's doing that to is Caitlin Clark. And this set the internet on fire. People were, how could she possibly do this? I mean, they were enraged. Take, for example, Dave Portnoy, who runs Barstool Sports. Here's what he had to say about it. He wrote, For all the dummies out there who don't understand why Angel Reese is classless, it's because she taunted Clark with 10 seconds left in a game that was long over. Talking in the moment is one thing. Doing it when she did was hashtag classless, and that's why it's trending. Okay, I now personally, me, I know Dave Portnoy has been on the show before. I wouldn't be taking my etiquette lessons from somebody who runs Barstool Sports, but naked girls. I don't know why he thinks that she needs to have an etiquette, why she can't enjoy the fact that she's winning. But what was stunning about his statement, and he wasn't the only one, by the way, here is Keith Olbermann also pushing this narrative that she's just some trashy, classless girl who's taunting. He wrote, What an effing idiot. What I like beneath Keith Olbermann's tweet is that Shaq writes, Shut your dumb up and leave Angel Reese alone. <laughs> By the way, Shaq, 
all of us want Keith Oberman to shut his dumb up, whether he's talking about Angel Reese or anything else. But the reason why these people are were so patently wrong, right, why Keith Oberman and Dave Portner were so patently wrong about this is because Caitlin Clark did this exact same gesture in an earlier game. And Dave Portner says, oh, well, she didn't do it like, she didn't do it exactly like Angel Reese. She wasn't as close to the other player when she did it. Well, why don't you, why don't you judge that for yourself? Here is Caitlin Clark doing the exact same gesture at an earlier game. So it, she's walking across, if you're listening to this podcast, she looks very angry and fired up. She does the you can't see me gesture. She's all fired up because that's what happens when you play sports. And this is why this entire debacle is so annoying. This is what they are feeling nothing but adrenaline, right? I love when you go to a sports match and you know that the people that are down there want to kill each other and they're all fired up and they're feeling that adrenaline. The audience feels it too, right? When you're watching that stuff, you're like, yes, yes, absolutely. And Caitlin Clark, by the way, agrees. She actually came out in defense of Angel Reese because she knows that she similarly taunts other players when she gets excited and when she's playing the match. Here was her statement. She wrote, I don't think Angel should be criticized at all. I'm just one that competes and she competed. I think everybody knew there was going to be a little trash talk in the entire tournament. It's not just me and Angel. We're all competitive. We all show our emotions in different ways. You know, Angel is a tremendous, tremendous player. I have nothing but respect for her. I love her game. The way she rebounds the ball, scores the ball is absolutely incredible. I'm a big fan of her. And even the entire LSU team, they played an amazing game. Men have always had trash talk. You should be able to play with that emotion. That's how every girl should continue to play. Oh my gosh, what a refreshing statement. How refreshing it is to hear that there are still people that believe in competition, that believe in healthy aggression. That's what they are experiencing, a healthy amount of aggression as they play this game that they both love. And they're not acting like wimps. But of course, we live in a wimp society and we need people to be sad for them. We need people to say, oh, well, this is not unacceptable. It's not sportsmanlike conduct. And who was one such person who weighed in to this? And I guess she was so perturbed by Angel Reese's gesture that she decided she was going to invite both teams to the White House. Everybody gets a participation trophy. None other than our horrendous first lady. I hate even calling her that. Doctor, which she definitely is not, Jill Biden. Here's what she had to say. Congratulations to both teams. So I know we'll have the champions come to... um to the White House, we always do. So, you know, we'll have LSU come. But you know what? I'm going to tell Joe, I think Iowa should come too because they played such a good game. So, right? So winners and losers, that's sportsmanship. That's good sportsmanship. Winners and losers, that's good sportsmanship. No, the idea of sports is that we want to see a winner and we want to understand that there is, of course, necessarily a loser. And you award and reward the winners, not the losers with participation trophies. That's not the reason why they competed. That's not the reason why these girls dedicated so much time and effort into becoming the best, right? That is not what Angel Reese set out to do. She didn't set out to train her body and to be able to play at the level that she is able to play, to execute with her team so that somebody could say to her, but, you know, we also need to award the losers and make them feel special. Caitlin Clark is not asking for that. She gets it. And so... People were understandably upset with Joe Biden's remark, and Joe Biden now wants to apologize to Angel Reese. But Angel Reese is not having that. Take a listen. The roles were reversed. It wouldn't be the same. If we were to lose, we would not be getting invited to the White House. And I remember she made a comment about both teams should be invited because it would be the, it was sportsmanship. And I'm like, are you saying that because of what I did? And what, like, that stuff like that, it, it bothers me because you are a woman at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. White, black, it doesn't matter. You're a woman. You're supposed to be standing behind us before anything this morning. We made a, couple, a, a lot of phone calls, and that's why she wants to come out and apologize. But at the same time, the damage is I don't done. accept the. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't accept the apology because mm. of you Jill, said what you Jill said. Biden. Yeah. They can have that spot. Like, we'll go to the Obamas. <laughs> I kind of love this girl. I got to say, I'm a fan of Angel Reese. Seems like you guys can't see her. Congratulations, Angel Reese. Congratulations to the entire LSU women's team. You guys played a remarkable, obviously, season. You won the championship. Enjoy the win. You're allowed to gloat a little bit. You're allowed to feel the pride that you are feeling. That is what champions are supposed to feel. Don't let people take that experience away from you because what's really happening is we live in a society of losers. And Caitlin Clark is not that. 
Caitlin Clark, you get to come back next season and compete. And I hope to see both of you guys do that to each other on the court every single time. End of story. All right. I saw this headline yesterday and I honestly, I just couldn't believe it. I could believe it, but I couldn't believe it. You know what I'm talking about? Alex Murdoch, you guys know I was obsessed with the Murdoch murders in South Carolina. I'm still obsessed with it. I'm still obsessed with um, every element of what they are doing now going back and seeing whether or not that gay boy who was found on the side of the road was also potentially murdered by the Murdochs. I can't look away from this. Well, Alex Murdoch, 54 years old, obviously got sentenced as he should have been sentenced for murdering his wife and his son. The evidence was abundant. And you would think that he would be having a very bad time in prison because he's going to rot away in prison for the rest of his life. But no, as it turns out, he is receiving love letters from crazy people, people that are obsessed with him, women that have fallen in love with him by watching the trial. Yes, believe it or not, the disgraced lawyer is receiving pitches even from Netflix who want him to be in the documentary. He's basically become a celebrity behind bars. And he's not the first one. We know this. Serial killers, even people like Jeffrey Dahmer, who raped and murdered young boys, received love letters in prison, received tons of fan mail from women that wanted to marry him. So this is the exact same circumstance, which shows you that people just don't care. People are actually this crazy. One correspondent, her name was Nicolette Kay, and I really do wish they would publish these people's names, uh, wrote to Murdoch on March 12th, quote, I think I love you. I think about you all day, every day, according to a message that was logged and obtained via the freedom of information laws. Another message, which was sent by her the following day, reads, reads, I swear on my life and on my soul, I'll never say a single word to anyone important or not important. I genuinely care for you. How did Nicolette fa- fall in love with Alex Murdoch, a person who murdered his son and murdered his wife? and stole millions of dollars from his law firm How did she, and had an opioid addiction. How did she watch this trial and fall in love with him? Another woman named Lacey Kay similarly wrote, she wrote, I am just a small town girl from Missouri. I'm here if you want to talk or vent. Kissy, kissy, Lacey. Destiny H, another woman offered to send him some pics of her. She told Murdoch that she believed that he was innocent. And she wrote, quote, you didn't kill your family. Somebody else did. And you don't want to tell it. I give you all the love for not snitching. But then again, sometimes you got to do what you got to do for your freedom. So, yep, this is the country that we live in. This is the world that we live in. People are deluded. People are crazy. And I don't even think Netflix should be offering him a platform, but we'll see where that ends up. But I just saw that story and I was so fundamentally grossed out with the idea that women are wanting to send him pictures that I wanted to share it. All right, guys, that is all the time that we have for today. I have some exciting exclusive content coming up on Daily Wire Plus. So be sure to click the link in the description and subscribe right now. And also be sure to come back tomorrow because there will be, of course, a brand new episode.